What a wonderful day. I should go outside and play. Ain't no need to sit inside the house and hibernate. Hibernate? I was just about to toss a live grenade in your driveway and drive away. Are you afraid of a blade made of a razor with AIDS? Blood dripping from it, ripping your stomach out from the waist up? You talk a lot of shit that you was never ill though. Eminem was on the verge of losing his career due to a $3 million lawsuit from a childhood abuser who was offended. This situation was just one of many he faced. If you want to learn more about Eminem's tragic and controversial life, stay with us. Eminem's life was hard from an early age. He was born on October 17, 1972, with the full name of Marshall Bruce Mathers III. His mother, Deborah Ray, nearly lost her life during a grueling 73-hour labor. His father, Marshall Bruce Mathers Jr., was part of a band called Die Warbox that played at Ramada Inns along the Dakota-Montana border. However, this phase of his life was short-lived as Marshall abused Debbie, Eminem's mother, leading to the breakdown of their relationship and Marshall's abandonment. Thus, Marshall entered the same cycle of paternal abandonment as his mother and grandmother and never met his father. Not all was bad in this part of his life, as his uncle Todd became a father figure to him. However, due to the constant moving, he never fully formed this relationship. From a young age, instability in his life led to certain situations, such as being the new kid in elementary school, friendless due to frequent moves. He also suffered from bullying, which peaked at the age of nine, when a bully named D'Angelo Bailey brutally attacked him in the school bathroom. Marshall was in a coma for 10 days and underwent months of rehabilitation. Medical bills piled up, exceeding $150,000, and Marshall had to stop taking medications that left him in a zombie-like state. His mother, concerned for his well-being, wouldn't allow him to continue. But that brings us to 1987, when Marshall's mother made a decision that would change his life forever. That's no exaggeration. She allowed Kimberly Annie Scott, a girl from a broken home, to live with them. Kim had been abandoned by her father and rejected by her mother, so she lived wherever she could find shelter. Davey met Kim at a social services center and brought her home. At first, living together was not easy for Marshall and Kim. In fact, they did not get along very well. Over time, however, they found themselves sharing the same room. Despite Davy's attempts to kick Kim out of the house, Marshall stood his ground and said he would leave if she did. So Kim and Marshall stayed at Debbie's house and began a romantic relationship. But this was not a stable relationship. We can't say it was a healthy one, as Kim often physically assaulted him during their numerous fights. In addition, Marshall faced another tragedy when his uncle and best friend, Ronnie, took his own life after a breakup. The loss of Ronnie plunged Marshall into deep devastation. He couldn't attend the funeral because of the painful lie told by his mother, who claimed that Ronnie had reached out to him before he left. Although the truth was that Ronnie never called, the false claim added to the burden of guilt Marshall carried. Ronnie's death, though tragic, was the moment that marked him as a rapper. And so this young man with a tragic childhood would enter an even more intense adulthood. In 1996, a legend was born under the name of Eminem. Marshall, aware of potential legal issues with the candy company Eminem, which was his original name, decided to change his stage name to Eminem, simply spelling out his initials to avoid legal conflicts. His first release as Eminem was the album Infinite, which was released in November of the same year. But the album was a failure in every sense of the word. No one listened to it, and the record label never recouped its investment. This caused him to fall into a deep depression because he felt a great sense of guilt. And why do we mention this? because at that point, two very serious and unpleasant things happened to his life and career, apart from the lack of support from his wife, who believed that he would never be a rapper. He also faced the disdain of the African-American community. Furthermore, the reason why this album was so despised 
was because of the bad publicity they gave it. After that, he was fired from his job and couldn't support his daughter, which led him to fall into drugs for a long time and even attempt suicide by taking a large number of pills. All this to finally have a moment of enlightenment. In the midst of all this, his alter ego, Slim Shady, was born. A character whose name roughly translates to the Grim Thin One and represents the darker and more troubled side of Marshall. Inspired by the teasing he received as a child for being thin, Slim Shady became a vehicle to address issues that Eminem couldn't. This alter ego would mark a turning point in his career, taking him down paths he had never explored before. In September 1999, Marshall's mother sparked controversy by filing a $10 million defamation lawsuit against her own son. Yes, you heard that right. His own mother filed a lawsuit against her own son, claiming that she did not agree with the details the rapper had revealed about her in his music. Fortunately, the dispute between mother and son came to an end with a financial settlement of $25,000 but the conflict came at a significant personal cost. The relationship between them was irreparably broken. During the same period, Marshall and Kim decided to take a significant step and get married. However, their marriage was a failure and did not stand the test of time. In less than a year, in 2000, their marriage ended. Yes, while he was successful during those years, his personal life was on the decline because shortly after, he would even release the album Marshall Mothers, a rather strong and delicate album with a much more personal tone, where you can find the song Kim, where he describes in detail how he killed her after an infidelity, something really delicate to do. After the divorce, perhaps somewhat incoherently, she attempted suicide, which led to a lawsuit against Eminem. And why did she do that? According to her, it was because the song caused her problems. However, the lawsuit didn't amount to much. In 2001, during the fourth Grammy Awards, an event filled with emotion and recognition, things took a serious turn against Marshall's career. The Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, GLA ID, an organization dedicated to LGBTQ rights, took a firm stance against Eminem's lyrics, which they deemed homophobic. While they were campaigning against this, Elton John, a prominent artist, suddenly collaborated with Eminem in his performance, causing a significant uproar. Glad strongly condemned the pairing, emphasizing its disagreement with the lyrics and content of the controversial rapper's songs. Meanwhile, on another front, something unusual happened in Marshall's life when he found himself in a $30 million lawsuit, not from his ex-wife or his mother, but from a schoolmate named D'Angelo Bailey, who claimed that a song composed by Eminem had defamed D'Angelo Bailey and caused irreparable damage to his career as a rapper. For two years, the court meticulously examined each argument presented by both parties. Ultimately, the case was dismissed, but it left its mark on the music world and the lives of those involved. In May 2002, the world received The Eminem Show, the final chapter in an unstoppable saga of musical success. Since its release, the album has soared to the top of the charts, selling an astounding 1.332 million copies in its first week. Among the songs, Without Me stood out but not without controversy. In the single, Eminem mocked the boy bands of the time, including Limp Bizkit, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, and others, and staked his claim in an ever-evolving musical landscape. While his music continued to dominate the airwaves, Eminem made the leap into the world of cinema in 2002 with 8 Mile, a musical drama that captured the essence of his life in Detroit. Eminem took on the challenge of portraying a fictionalized version of himself. The film's main song, Lose Yourself, not only topped the charts for 12 consecutive weeks, but also won the coveted Academy Award for Best Original Song. 
a historic moment that made Eminem the first hip-hop artist to receive such an honor. However, all this work took a toll that nearly pushed Eminem back into the pit of vice, and it was the long hours on the set of 8 Mile, coupled with the pressure and stress that led to insomnia. This led him to seek relief. Eminem plunged into the world of drugs with an Ambien tablet and began a battle with addiction that would define his subsequent years. This episode brings us to a brief moment of recovery. It involves an incident in which she was found with drugs in her possession and subsequently arrested. This event led Eminem to fight for custody of the person in question, which he eventually won, his growing progress. Eminem had long been a great admirer of Tupac, who clearly left an indelible mark on music production with his work on the soundtrack to Tupac Resurrection, released in May 2002. That success propelled him even further the following year, when he produced most of the songs on Tupac's album, Loyal to the Game, released on November 7, 2003. After that, he would release his next controversy. I mean, for his next release, we're talking about Just Lose It, which was the first single from Encore. The song contained barbs directed at Michael Jackson, which prompted an angry reaction from the King of Pop, who called into a radio show to express his displeasure. But what isn't commonly told is that the King of Pop decided to use a very interesting strategy. He bought Eminem's record catalog so that for the next few years, Eminem would have to answer to the person he was trying to humiliate, thus further humiliating himself. After three years, in the summer of that year, Eminem embarked on his first concert tour of the United States with the Anger Management 3 Tour, an experience that promised to be electrifying as he shared the stage with prominent names such as 50 Cent, G-Unit, Lil Jon, D12, Obi Trice, and The Alchemist. However, the tour took an unexpected turn when it was announced in August that the European leg of the tour would be cancelled because Eminem had entered rehab for his battle with an addiction to sleeping pills. Despite the setbacks, Eminem did not let his personal situation interrupt his music production. Throughout the year, he released several projects, including Like Toy Soldiers, Mockingbird, Ass Like That, One and Gone EP, and Curtain Call, The Hits, the latter of which was released on December 6, 2005, on Aftermath Entertainment. The album was a resounding success, selling nearly 441,000 copies in its first week in the United States and debuting at number one on the Billboard Hot 200, marking his fourth number one album. However, despite his success, Eminem hinted in an interview that he would be taking a break as an artist to deal with his personal issues. The death of Proof, a close friend and rap partner, was another devastating blow to Eminem during his nearly five-year hiatus. In September 2007, Eminem expressed his inner struggle in an interview, describing his state as being in limbo, not knowing when or if he would release another album. Despite his personal challenges, Eminem found solace and energy in his studio work. And later that year, he released King Mathers, an unreleased project originally planned as his retirement album. He continued to work on new projects, and in March 2009, he announced the release of two new albums that year. The first, Relapse, was released on May 19th. And although it received mixed reviews, it was a commercial success that re-established his presence in the hip-hop world. His second release, Relapse Refill, a reissue of the original album with seven additional songs, came later that year. In 2010, Eminem surprised the world with Recovery, an album that showcased a more introspective and emotional sound, a departure from his previous shock-focused approach. The album was well-received and won numerous awards, further solidifying his position as one of the leading rappers of the 21st century. After that, his life calmed down a bit and felt a little easier. So things slowed down, but from the beginning, he lived in conflicts and controversies, from a tough childhood 
to an adulthood full of conflicts. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.